it is uh, it has been a wonderful series that Pops Matthew has been sharing with us on bona fide believers, and I'm sure he's going to ask all of us, what does that mean? So get ready. He's going to check it out. <laughs> uh, but he's sharing on, an, on a fantastic topic today, and that is our role in politics. And, you know, I'm, I'm someone who's not very interested in politics. It's like, you know, whatever happens, happens. Um, but you know what? If we're going to be believers who are going to make an impact in our nation and impact in our society, then we are spiritual 24-7. It is not, we don't choose, pick and choose where we're going to make that impact. We need to be able to make it in any arena. Amen? So it is wonderful, Pops Matthew, that you're sharing on that topic because uh, it is good for us to know where we stand and it is good for us to know as bona fide believers um, how we should act at a time like this, especially when we see so much going on around us, and even in the times to come. So over to you, Pops Matthew. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you, Rubika. God bless you too. And uh, hi, everyone. Welcome. And it's a joy to see so many here from different nations, as, as usual. You know, to especially our, you know, for us, it's five. We started about 5.30 here, but for others, it could be in you know, the middle of the day. You might be even skipping lunch. Uh, but it's, you know, it's joyful to see you all here. Thank you. And uh, yes, thank you, Rubika. My son, today's topic we're going to talk about is uh, politics. Uh, it's something that's very close to my heart. It's been always been there ever since I understood politics. Uh, and, uh, but again, as I said, it's, uh, it's something that uh, we as uh, Christians, we have either pushed it away or we felt that it's not, because we, we are Christians, we shouldn't be involved in uh, circular governments and so on. Uh, so this is where it is totally wrong because that's not God's plan. Because Jesus says we are from kingdom of heaven, but we are to rule the earth. We have been given responsibility to rule the earth. So the people that we choose to elect will either give us peace or give us wickedness in where we live. Right, so it is a choice that we have, and it is a choice that we must exercise as good stewards uh, of this of this earth that God has given us. So, before I share, let me just pray. Father, we just thank you for this time together, and Lord, even as we uh, as I share the word, Lord, I thank you, Lord, for putting this into my heart. And I know everything we share is always at a perfect time, your time, not our time. And I thank you for. Everyone is gathered here, and I pray, Lord, Holy Spirit, that you speak through me. Whatever I prepare, let it be you who is delivering the message, and let it be give glory to you and for and, and be edifying to everyone who are gathered here today. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let me share now. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> I think this time, rather than asking everybody to say what it is my next screen is, maybe I should ask individuals <laughs> as, a, as a test, right? Uh, no, I'm just kidding. So I'm sure you all know this. So I will, you know, can somebody shout it out for me? Everybody's silent. <laughs> authentic. Okay, genuine, authentic. And and doors. I think I should produce some t-shirts about this, right? <laughs> oh, fide believers in the front and behind, you put genuine, authentic endorse, yeah? That'd be cool. Hey, maybe there's something that we can do for Project 61 to raise money, yeah? <laughs> for the ministry. Awesome. At least we can get 50 t-shirts sold here, right? <laughs> I'll talk to Herman. Maybe we can get something done here. Thank you. So yeah, Jesus showed us the way to authenticity, fill this mandate, the apostles followed, multiplied and fulfilled, and we are to do likewise as ambassadors. All right, so that's space, that's what I always believe, that's what I breathe, that's what I walk, that is what I sing, that is what I talk, and that's the way it is, right? Now, today's topic is, as, I, as you all said, our role in politics. Now, you know, one of the reasons why I'm talking about this is because of the recent activity that's taking place in the US. Uh, it is, you know, this is the first time in U.S. politics where there's been so much of divisiveness, there's so much of anger, there's so much of bitterness, there is so much of fighting, there is, 
you know, the social the media and the social media have taken sides against one against the other. Uh, and it's just shocking. It has been just shocking. And, and why has this happened? Because it's partly because we as children of God have failed in our responsibilities. Because, you know, there are two aspects to politics. One is, you know, who we vote and who we elect if, to rule us or govern us in the natural realm. But it is also a failure to, to continuously intercede for our political part, you know, people in politics and in authority to God to give for God to give them wisdom, to God to remove away wickedness from them and, and to help them to rule in truth and in righteousness. Right? So we have, you know, we take politics so lightly, and and because of that, today we've seen so much of misery. Uh, nations being surrendered to tyranny and evil and so on. So this is what I felt I should talk about today. So my scripture, foundation scripture today is from Isaiah 59, 14 to 16a. You know, it says justice is turned away backwards, right? We can see every nation going backwards and righteousness, uh, you know, uprightness and right standing with God stands far off. You can see people are moving away from God. For the truth has fallen in the streets. People are not heeding when they talk about Christianity. You know, they're pushing away Christianity from the nations, right? And the, and uprightness cannot enter. Where even the courts of justice today, even you know, even though they may have to say, you know, the word in God we trust, but you know, the ruling and the what activity that goes on uh, has a lot of unrighteousness and uh, uh, you know, wickedness in there. And yes, tr uh, truth is lacking. And he who departs from evil himself is a prey. Right? And the Lord saw it and it displeased him that there was no justice. Right? And it displeased him that there was no justice because we have given away justice to the wrong people because of our complacency. Right? And he saw that there was no man and wondered that there was no intercessor, no one to intervene on behalf of truth and righteous and right. Okay, so coming back to you know what's happening in the US, there's been a lot, you know, we uh, for me, I am not, but you know, even though we are not in the US, but US when US coughs, we all catch a cold because that's how powerful that nation is, right. So we need to make sure that even though we live in different countries, but that nation must also be ruled by and uh, governed by righteous people, right? And 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 uh, you know, the, I'm looking at some prophecies was done in 2016 to 2014, where they said, okay, I'm not I'm not saying I'm endorsing uh, Trump or anybody, but I'm saying the prophecy was that Trump will will win. It was you know there was no no room for any doubt. God said he will win. Right, and he won in 2016. And from that day onwards to today, there's been constant, uh, you know, attempts to make him come down, pull him down. And the interesting part of the prophecy was that for 2020, God wants him to come back as to continue his second term. But, but the conditional in the sense, if my people, he said, if my people will pray for him and intercede for him and work, work, elect him, he will come in, right? Now, there was a survey after the election, 48% of the Christians, so-called Christians, voted against him, right? So you see, the thing is, it's not about, you know, I, for me, it doesn't matter, right? But what I'm trying to say is that is whether you choose to obey God's word or you choose to obey what the fake news is and the information that's coming, what is seen as facts which is all lies so this is what happened right but i believe there is still god is grace god is in control uh, and uh, we you know god is whatever is the outcome we know god is in control but what i'm trying to say is that we as believers of christ as the children of god we have a great responsibility to ensure that god the God's chosen person leaders are brought into to govern the nations. Because when God chooses the people, there's always, and, and we continue to intercede, even if there is wickedness in them, through our prayers, through our interceding, right, God can turn things around.
make that nation a nation of peace, a nation of prosperity, and a nation of blessing. Right? So this is what it's all about. And I, the next, you know, this is something that I took from the Australian Christian Lobby website. I just cut out a few pieces of information. It says in Australia, as well as across the Western world, truth in the public square is being attacked and suppressed. Just going back to my Isaiah 51, 59, right? The greatest stronghold of truth, classic Christianity is being pathologized and blamed for significant harms. Everything they're blaming Christianity for, it, right? Righteousness exalts a nation, but a sin a reproach to any people, Proverbs 14.34. To this end, Christian institutions are being undermined. Churches are being pressured by new moral and legal norms that one day they may even have to, you know, allow same-sex marriage to be done in the church. It's a possibility, right? Individuals who speak or live consistent with truth are made a prey, right? They attack us, right? To stand for truth in public as a relentless, unquiet, and effective voice is a leadership role that is desperately needed among believers. It is requires divinity, divinely inspired courage, wisdom, endurance. It not means going to rioting, demonstrating. No, it is our prayer, collective prayer. God will move. You know, God will send angels. God will change the atmosphere. Right? That's what it's all about. But the courage of one inspires the courage of others. And the truth, whenever it is spoken, will yield fruit. Right? That's God's word. Because when we start using the sword of the spirit, the word of God, it cuts through every work of the enemy. Right? So silence is not an option. Let me repeat. Silence is not an option. Reflection of what's happening, you know, I'm just talking about what's happening in the U.S. and church. And we also see what's happening in Nigeria. We see what's happening in so many different countries today. Right? So, guys, silence is no longer an option. Right? We need to wake up. We need to wake up. Right? So, as Christians, we must constantly ask ourselves, are we doing everything we can to exercise our rights and privileges as citizens? We must ask our questions. You know, in this country, that are in this niche world, there are certain countries where there is no election, right? Because it's either through becomes a monarchy or dictatorship like China. If you look at some of the Middle East countries, there is no, you don't have a choice. But you can still pray. You can still intercede for God to bring righteousness into that nation, right? And, and certain countries, it is mandatory to elect, not go to be part of the voting system. There are 22 countries in this world who mandate that it is compulsory, right? And Australia is one of them. So I'm going to you know what it means to be a Christian citizen. I'm going to address five different points here, right? I'm going to talk about what God has granted as authority. Christians are needed to stand against evil, right? Christians' values contribute positively to societies. I'm going to talk about some of those aspects. Obedience to authority demands good citizenship. And finally, good citizenship sets an example for generations to come. Because we have a responsibility to pray so that the future generations will be able to have good leaders, spiritual leaders, you know, will follow the truth and, and, and the light. So let's look at the first topic. God has granted us authority, right? Jesus says all authority belongs to God, and, but he has put human beings on the earth as caretakers and to take possession. That is mandate that we have been given, right? God says, we, I'm putting you there to take charge, to steward the earth and the nations that wherever you're living and to take possession. Take possession means not the conquering physically, but through prayers, through our, you know, uh, right, selecting the right people, we can bring, uh, you know, good uh, stewardship into that land, right? So what is our task? Right? Uh, in Matthew 28, 8, 20, Jesus says, we are to go and make disciples of all nations, teaching them to obey God in every area of life. It's not just about salvation. It's about every area of life, including, you know, uh, for being a good, uh, good citizenship, what, what it means to be a good citizen, identifying truth and righteousness, selecting the right people in, to, into leadership to govern nations. Right. 
So the political realm should not be excluded by us. We must disciple people to make godly decisions about government. You know, today we are blessed because in Australia we have a, a Christian prime minister. But we not always never had that privilege. Right? And whenever we find a prime minister or a party that comes in, that's, you know, in Australia it's very classic. One party tries to restore this nation to create wealth and to bring prosperity to the nation. There's another party that spends, 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 spends. Right? So we need to, so we need to discern. This is why, like Christian, you know, ACL, we have bodies like Christian, uh, Australian Christian Lobby. They have, they have similar organizations in other countries, in, in USA, in you know, most countries where uh, there is a lobby. So you, it is our responsibility to go and study what they're saying. What is the criteria when it comes to election? We can look at those things and see who are the, how do they identify candidates? How do they identify what are the, you know, the manifesto of those parties? What are they trying to bring in for the next term of election? So we need to do some homework. If we don't do the homework, we just simply blindly follow because a lot of people will vote based on their parents, what their parents have been doing. Or the, you know, so they just blindly do that. You know, if I'm a labor worker, I just do my parents did over, I go and do work labor and so on. And if I'm, you know, my parents were conservative, I would. No, it is, that's not, you know, we, we have to be accountable. We cannot just follow blindly from what our parents did or our forefathers did. It doesn't work that way, right? Because every time the change, situation is constantly changing, circumstances are changing around the world. So we need to be mindful. We've got to constantly pray and ask the Holy Spirit to guide us to see, okay, who are the candidates that we, you know, within our own constituency that we need to vote for so that we can make an impact. Even if they don't win, but we have done our part. We have a con clean conscience that we have chosen the right candidate based on their values. It's, it's aligns with the biblical truths. And then we will be able to make that choice. So that is what... God wants us to do a godly, you know, to make godly decisions about choosing the right government. Christians are needed to stand against evil. Christians should contribute more positively than anyone else to the political process. In, ju in example, justice, compassion, truth, and righteousness. Right? If we don't contribute, guess what? The minorities will take control, and that's what's happening. Right. So today we look at it as, you know, we as good citizens of the kingdom are best equipped to be the citizens of the kingdom of, you know, of man. Because why? Because we understand from the Bible what God talks about, what is good stewardship, how to govern righteously, how to bring prosperity, how to create employment, how to be, you know, fairness and justice uh, in the nation so that everybody will prosper. Not through suppression, not through corruption. Right? So we as citizens of God's kingdom are the best equipped to be citizens of the kingdom of man. And we should take serious, take this matter seriously. Right? Because of our indifference, atheistic and circular humanistic leaders gain control of nations across Europe, Asia, Africa. What was the result? Right? Today, we're seeing such horrible situations where nations have been hijacked by minorities. Right? And they're taking control and they're doing wicked things that they please at the expense of you know, their own citizens. As I've got some examples here, statistics here. It is estimated over 170 million men, women and children have been tortured and killed by wicked governments. These are unarmed, helpless citizens and foreigners. Right now, we cannot stand, sit there, and say this has got nothing to do with me. Not because just because I live in Australia, I'm protected, I'm blessed. You know, I can just I don't I'm not worried. I don't care about what's happening in Africa or Asia or in you know countries that is suppressed by tyrants. Right, we are citizens of this kingdom of heaven, God, which means we are ambassadors for all nations. We are ambassadors for all nations. So we have to intervene 
for every nation. Constantly pray, see for God, for God to bring righteous people into those nations. Because when there is prosperity, there is peace, there is joy, you know, it, it, it brings a lot of tranquility into the nations. Right? We, we see what's happening now in, in Nigeria. We've been praying for it recently. Millions and you know, thousands and thousands of people are being massacred. Right? And that's only what we know. Recently, I heard, you know, even in Poland, there is some, some you know, ethnic violence that is taking place in Europe, parts of Europe. Okay. So what we're saying is that, yes, first and foremost, our priority is to our nation. But we must also be diligently praying and interceding for other nations as well. Because what we speak into the atmosphere will change on the natural realm. Because there are, as I always say, there are two realms on this earth that we, you know, we have the spiritual realm and the natural realm. What goes on in the natural realm is, you know, is controlled by human beings. But we speak spirit into the spiritual realm, we can always override, always override the work of the enemy. So we have a responsibility as citizens of, of God that, you know, that God has given us that responsibility as his ambassadors and to, as stewards of, the, of, this, of this nation, this world. Right? So only through the return, you know, through a, re, a return to faith in God, as God revealed himself to man in Jesus Christ, can mankind and society find redemption from the tyranny of evil. Right? That's only one, only way. Only way. Later on, as I summarize, I'm going to talk about our scripture verse from Colossians. Right? We'll just summarize what I've got to say. I'm saying to you. Right? Number three, Christian values contribute positively to society. Right? Oops, okay, what happened here? Never mind. Okay, it's going backwards. Okay. I didn't change the sequence. Right? In Christian, it is Christians' involvement in governments through the ages that gave us hospitals, civil liberties, abolition of slavery modern science and elevation of women, regard for human life, great works of art, everything. You know, the 12 mountains, you know, were blessed. Every aspect of, you know, area of society was blessed because Christians, in, initially when governments were formed, they formed around the biblical principles. And they did, they showed justice, they showed compassion, and they show you know, and education and so on, right? But today we are not, you know, we, these are all being compromised. Even I hear recently that some of the countries, even they're changing the history books to reflect their own agenda. Right? So we see that the good that results from applying God principle and the horror that results from rejecting it. Right? So it is cruel and irresponsible for us. I highlighted that. It is cruel, I would even say wicked, and irresponsible for us to keep us Jesus teaching about the truth, love, and compassion to ourselves. Because when we teach compassion, when we teach truth, right, God, people will change. People will see the truth and the light. Right? So where that arrow came from? Okay. Oh, number four, obedience to authority demands good citizenship. Romans chapter 13 clearly states that we must obey government leaders right, because all authority comes from God and the people are the leaders. Where, and, and you know, even though we must obey government leaders because we have put them there, but we are the leaders, we are the one who elect them and make it possible. So if we fail in our duty, then we are going to fail in the, in the kind of leadership that we're bringing into the nations, right? We are to express our obedience to God by exercising our rights and privileges as citizens to elect the right candidate. So don't be, don't be, you know, motivated by the parties, right? First, you need to look at who's your candidate in your constituency, the most suitable for, you know, from a biblical perspective. Then you look at the party, what is the party stands for, right? So these are things we got to look at and see what is the most you know, we have to vote for somebody. We can't say no. Right? So, but we choose the best possible candidate under the circumstance that we have. And we just leave it rest to the God. Rest to God. Right? Democracy, perhaps, is the most difficult form of government to maintain. 
because there's so much of freedom there. Everybody wants freedom. And this is from uh, the first president of US, Franklin. Uh, he was asked by a lady, uh, you know, what kind of government are you giving us? And he said, a republic, madam, if you can keep it. If you can keep it. Because again, it comes back to the interest. The responsibility is given to the citizens. It is the choice of the citizens whether they maintain a godly uh, government or they just neglect their responsibility and allow this minority to hijack and bring a wicked government full of corruption. Right? The peril of apathy. Apathy is one of the worst things that we can, th we can think of do. If we don't get involved, elected representatives begin to express their own interests or the interests of those who are willing to pay them money and attention. Right? Apathy and greed soon gives way to corruption and injustice, which give way to tyranny and misery as we see it. Right? Number five, good citizenship sets an example for generations to come. Right? Those who apply God's principle to government pave the way for generations of blessings. You know, we have responsibility because, you know, we, all of us here gathered here, we know the truth versus the facts. And it is our responsibility to choose the right government so that our next generation will, we will be blessed and they will continue to grow and flourish. If we don't take responsibility, then it is going to go backwards. <clears throat> right? As a Christian, we can exert an enormous influence on the direction of a nation's government taking possession spiritually and natural, right? Both it is, you know, we have control over both realms, the spiritual realm and the natural realm. So we, you know, we cannot neglect, we can't just say I've woken, I've forgotten about, I, you know, I get on with my life. No. As believers, it's an ongoing responsibility. We have to pray daily for our nations. We have to pray for our leaders so that we'll have godly leaders. Even if we choose a wrong leader, but through our prayer, God can change their heart. God says, I can change the hearts of kings. Right? And he can bring integrity, righteousness into the nation through them. You and I you know, may not have the gifts or interest to be politicians. But we can still make a big difference if our minds, you know, if we put our minds to it by selecting the right candidates, parties based on political principles. You know, one of the sad thing is because the churches have failed to educate the congregations that why election is important politics, you must be aware of what is going on in the political land. They just totally ignored it. They say political, you know, it's, it's a bad word, right? You know, it's corruption and so on. But that is not God's plan. You know, Jesus said, I, you know, the government is on my shoulder. And we have, if the churches have constantly thought the right values about uh, governments and politics, today we may have a much better made world. You know, especially in Europe, especially in Africa, right? It, wherever it is, right? Because, it, you know, we don't have to be, it's not about us having majority as Christians in the nation. It's about how we, even as a minority, can shift nations through our prayers through our intercession, right? If the majority becomes complacent, the minority will take control as we are witnessing today. You know, things like same-sex marriages, you know, all these things, you know, they all, how did that come about? Because the majority were complacent. They allowed the minorities to raise up, voice their voice, and over time, it, you know, it's just like I say, repetition brings, uh, you know, uh, gives you uh, what, uh, mastery. Mastery. Sorry, I'm forgetting my own statement. Right. Thank you, Rupert. You know, we say repetition brings mastery. Ignorance and forgiveness and complacency also creates wickedness in the nations. Right. So there is no room for us to be complacent because we are children of God. 
God has given us all authority and power into our hands. And he said, great is what we have to do. But if we lose, we are complacent. We are saying, but it's not too late. It's never too late. We can reverse. We can delay, you know, the coming of the Antichrist. You know, what God says that it's going to Antichrist. It'll come one day. But we can delay through our prayers and through our intercession. And why we need to delay? Because that gives us an opportunity to bring more souls into the kingdom of heaven. Because timing is all thing. Because if we allow, if we are complacent, we allow the wickedness to come into the world, you know, wicked rulers and politicians to come in, Antichrist is going to come in sooner. But if we pray and we hold them back as long as possible, that gives us an opportunity to disciple and bring more people into the kingdom of heaven. Amen. So I'm going to sh share this story. This is about, you know, in, an example in, 19, in 1768, a Christian minister named John Witherspoon became a president of a college in New Jersey. Now it's called Princeton. While there, he taught biblical principles of government to his students. Right? He taught biblical principles of government to his students. Right. Of the 478 young men who graduated during his period in the, in the, in the, in the university, right? this is from an author called John Edsmore, 114 became ministers, 13 were state governors, 3 were Supreme Court judges, 20 were U.S. senators, 33 were U.S. congressmen, Aaron Burr became the vice president. And James Madison, the fourth president, became the president. Right? So what we're saying is that it is not only about, you know, our universities have neglected biblical teachings. Schools have neglected biblical teachings. So these kind, you know, so the people that's being turned out today into the world have lost every biblical value that God wants us to know and to teach them. And because they've gone so far away, from the truth, right? There's so much of selfishness, wickedness, everything has come in. So it's all about greed. It's all about power. That's what's happening now, right? So we, it is even more urgent for us. So, you know, that is almost 40% of his, of his total students that he, he taught, that went through him, right? And that 40%, how much, how many more people do you think they would have changed in their, wherever they were placed? Right. So this is the fruit, you know, the education system has failed. The, you know, if parents have failed, then how are we to bring back righteousness into the, in, into the world? You know, when Elijah said, I'm the only remnant left because before Jezebel kills me, God said, no, I have put aside 5,000 untainted. So God already has a remnant. We are his remnants. We are his remnant. We need to step up. If we don't step up, you know, then we cannot blame anybody else but ourselves. So we need to step up and choose the right people for the right, you know, in the government so that they represent us from a godly perspective. So in summary, I'm saying if you're not interested, you won't get involved. Right? If you're not interested, in you don't get involved. If you don't get involved, your interest is not represented. Simple as that. Right? Because you're not represented, you have lost your voice. So if you don't take part, you don't choose, you have no more voice. It's stolen from you. Right? Because you have no voice, you lose interest and even trust, you know, trust even more. Why? Because you have no right to complain now about what's happening in your nation because you have shirked your responsibility. Right? So the spiritual realm controls the natural realm. We have the power and authority to do so through prayer and the selection of right candidates. And we have to do it. It is not a choice. It is, it is a mandatory thing God expects us to do because he has given us the power, the authority, and, the, and how to steward this world and where I would be placed. And finally, I want to share with this scripture, right? In Colossians 15, 17, Jesus says, 
you know, it's about Jesus. He's the exact likeness of an unseen God, the visible representation of invisible. He's the firstborn of all creation. For it was in him that all things were created, in heaven and on earth. Things seen and unseen, whether thrones, dominions, rulers, or authorities, all things were created and exist through him by his service and intervention, and in him and for him. And he himself existed before all things, and in him all things consist, cohere, and all things together. So are we letting him down? My question to is, are we letting him down by not exercising our mandate? This is something that you need to ponder about. Like we say we love him, we believe in him, right? So including politics is also part of this, whatever he's created put on this earth. So this is a very short presentation, right? But I hope this helps you, right? Shows you that, you know, we as God's children, we have the mandate to choose the right people, wherever we are, wherever we are the right government, so that there's peace, joy, prosperity, blessings uh, in, in, in every nation. Thank you. I hope this helps you guys.